Hey now, what is up everybody? My name is Mike Brown, aka Review King and B, and I just got done watching a movie that's on Netflix. It came out this year, and I don't have a good reason why it took me so damn long to watch it, but of course I'm talking about The Adam Project. The Adam Project is a 2022 film that was directed by Sean Levy. Sean Levy? Sean Levy, and it's about, I guess the premise is, we meet Ryan Reynolds, who in the year 2050, travels back in time to our present time, and he is, there's a whole conspiracy, a whole person's death that he's trying to figure out what really went on with it, uh, he doesn't know if he can trust the people that you know, of the time that he just came back from. And he ends up meeting his old 12-year-old self. <laughs> I say old, but it's his 12-year-old self. And so seeing the two of them have to not only interact, but I guess save the world <laughs> with time travel, it sounds very bizarre. It sounds very out there. In a lot of ways it is, but I'm going to say that I really enjoyed this film. I did. I had a lot of fun with, well, Ryan Reynolds, of course, right? How many times have I watched a Ryan Reynolds movie and I've talked about that even if I didn't love the film, I enjoyed him in it. I obviously find him very entertaining, very amusing, just as far as he just has that natural charisma and natural personality that he can easily give out on screen. And it's his default. You know, the fact that his default is this likable, this is why this guy has had a career as long as he has. Uh, but I think we sometimes sleep on the fact that Ryan Reynolds is a really good actor, like dramatic actor. He hasn't always showcased that. But there is one scene in particular where he's in a bar and he interacts with his mom, played by Jennifer Garner. And the way how he talks to her and the way how he sort of almost apologizes or sort of tries to explain his 12-year-old behavior towards her and why his 12-year-old self is such a dick to her without obviously telling her who he really is it was so well acted and so heartwarming in so many ways. Let's talk about the 12-year-old version of Ryan Reynolds though. Uh, his character is Adam, obviously, Adam Project. Uh, but the younger version of him is played by Walker Scobin, Scobell. But the younger version of Adam is played by Walker Scobell. I think that's his name. Oh, well, this kid was great. I can't say I remember ever seeing him before. If I have, I don't remember. But I just, I thought he was great. I thought he was great at not only just playing a young version of Ryan Reynolds. I thought he was great at the delivery of how he performed. Because obviously the movie is written to have his younger self sound like stuff that Ryan Reynolds himself would say. You know, it was very written for Ryan Reynolds, even the child version of him. But this kid pulled it off. This kid nailed it. And I thought even just casting for looking like a young Ryan Reynolds I thought just they did a great job with that his back and forth with Ryan and and I instantly was wondering like okay why would Ryan Reynolds sort of willingly go back to a time where he would interact with a version of himself that is sort of destroying the space-time continuum right that's destroying uh, all reality if you interact with yourself at least that's what you kind of are supposed to believe but their explanation for how time travel works, time travel is always tricky. Time travel is always like, well, does this really make sense? Because you don't know if time travel itself could really make sense. But I was okay with the explanation. I was okay with the science-y rules that they laid out. I was at least willing to go with it. I mentioned Jennifer Garner playing Adam's mom. And I thought for the scenes that she had, she was good. It's very interesting that I notice how often Jennifer Garner plays mom roles nowadays, right? That's, that's all you really ever see her in, is playing a mom. But like I said, I thought she had a couple of good scenes. And I thought it was more interesting that her husband, Ryan Reynolds' father in this film, is played by Mark Ruffalo. And I find that interesting for so many reasons, not just because I like Mark Ruffalo in general. And it was very nice to see him in this film. And he's one of the best actors to sort of 
try to deliver sciency like dialogue and have it make sense, have it not sound like the dumbest shit ever. Mark Ruffalo is great with that. It, it's, he's believable that he really knows what he's talking about. He knows what he's doing. And maybe that's why I was able to go along with it. You get Neil deGrasse Tyson to watch this movie and he would probably tear it apart and make me sound like an idiot. That I buy it. But because of this, I thought Ruffalo was good. And also just seeing Mark Ruffalo kind of reunited with Jennifer Gardner after, what was it, 13 going on 30? <laughs> That's a movie that, you know, people sort of look fondly of in retrospect. And so to see them reunited here and now playing a husband and wife, it's almost like, oh, well, that's this is where those two characters ended up. Well, there you go. Kind of a happy ending. Maybe not really. But Zoe Saldana is also in the film. And you could argue that she's not in the movie a whole, whole lot. But I did like her role. I did like the parts that she was in. And and I thought the action was pretty good as well. The movie did have a pretty good pace. Can't say I was bored a whole lot during this. Whenever you'd seem like, oh, maybe they're going to slow down, a huge action scene would happen. And it would go on for a while, whether it's a car chase or even the way that they had the villains. <laughs> I'll get to them. But the bad guys, they would wear like these... I swear it looked like a combination of stormtroopers, but they were all wearing the Snake Eyes G.I. Joe-like outfits, the black armored helmet outfits that look kind of goofy, but also look like, hey, maybe they could do some damage. Although anytime they get shot, it seemed like the armor and the mask did absolutely nothing for them because they easily died. And there was this cool effect whenever these guys would die that they would all turn into dust, a la... Thanos snapping them away and the explanation of well because they're from a different timeline them dying here their body just evaporates like I don't know I just again I was digging all of that the one negative thing that I will say and it's really my only negative thing and it pains me to say it because Catherine Keener plays the villain and I thought she was terrible I just you know, and I usually do like this actress. I've seen her in so much stuff. And I every time I'm like, oh, I like Katherine Keener. And I, I don't know necessarily if it's like a bad performance per se. I mean, she's very one note. She's very generic and she's very blah and bland and nothing special. But even what they try to do with her, maybe it's the writing of her as a villain. It's just very piss poor. And they have this whole thing where it's the future version of her going back in time to interact with the present day version of her. So the present day version of her is de-aged with CGI. And holy shit, the de-aging of Katherine Keener in this movie makes me appreciate the de-aging of the Marvel films. And I'll even say I appreciate when that Star Wars movie de-aged de or resurrected <laughs> Grandma Tarkin, you know, because like as not great as that looked, it looked a million times better than having a real person and trying to make her look young. It's like, all right, Netflix, I know you guys have money. I know you guys are willing to pump some budget into movies, your movies, but where did it go? Uh, maybe it went to everything else, and when they got to this moment, they said, fuck it, let's just do what we can. <laughs> you know, it's only the villain, it doesn't really matter as much. Either way, I enjoyed the film, I had a lot of fun with the movie, I laughed out loud plenty of times. I very much enjoyed Ryan Reynolds interacting with his younger self, this kid, I think I can see big things for him. Uh, yeah, and you know what, this is, I think, the second of three projects that Ryan Reynolds and Sean Levy, Levy, uh, have worked with together. First movie was Free Guy, and that was I, I really enjoyed that. This movie was also good. So track record looks good for Deadpool 3, which is what they will be doing next. Anyways, guys, let me know in the comments below what do you think of The Atom Project if you end up seeing it. Did you like it as well? If you didn't see it, why? <laughs> why didn't you care about it? Like, comment, subscribe. Later! Yeah, 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 yeah. Stick it to my decision just to rupture y'all ignition. I'm painting my perfect vision. Intuition is real. If you humble, you will never stumble. Listen, it's clear. But I'ma give it to him. Let the God seize the day.